This is section 5.3, multiplying decimals. And multiplying decimals is similar to multiplying whole numbers. The only difference is that we have to place a decimal point in our product. For example, if we have 7 tenths times 3 hundredths, the 7 tenths has one decimal place, and the 3 hundredths has two decimal places. So if you remember, we could write each of these as a fraction, 7 tenths and 3 hundredths, and if we multiplied this out, just multiplying straight across, we'd get 21 on the top and 1,000 on the bottom. And that means that our product, we could go back and write in decimal form as 21 thousandths. The product has three decimal places. When we multiply decimals, we start out just multiplying them as though they were whole numbers. So we're just multiplying here, and we're going to ignore the decimal points for right now. So 2 times 2 is 4, and then 7 times 2 is 14. And we don't have to do anything with this 0 because 0 times anything is 0. So our initial product here looks like 144. Now we're going to go back and put the decimal point in that product. So again, we have to count how many decimal places are in each of our two numbers. This one has one decimal place. And this one has also one decimal place. So our second step is to add the number of decimal places that were in the two numbers that we were multiplying. We add those together and that tells us how many decimal places have to be in our product. So since we have one here and one here, one plus one is two, that means that there are going to be two decimal places in our product. So now we can go back to our product that we got from our multiplication. And remember, our decimal point with the whole number is always actually to the right of the last digit. So we're going to count back two places and put our decimal point right there. All right, let's do some examples. If we have 1.33 times negative 5 tenths. Now notice with multiplication, it doesn't matter that we line up the decimals. That doesn't matter at all here. And we know since this is a negative and this is a positive number, that means our product is going to be negative. So now we're just going to multiply these two just like we had whole numbers. So we're going to take the 5 times each of these 3. So we have 5 times 3 is 15. We're going to carry the 1. 5 times 3 is 15, again, plus 1 is 16. So we write down the 6 and carry the 1. And then 1 times 5 is 5, plus 1 is 6. All right, so here's our initial product. Now we know it's going to be negative, and we also have to put in the decimal point in the correct place. So in our factors, we had, for this one, we had two decimal places. And in our second one, we had one decimal place. So we're just adding these two together. 2 plus 1 is 3. That means that our product is going to have three decimal places. So we're going to take the value with that we got up here, and we have to remember our negative sign. And then we're going to count back from our last digit three decimal places. That's going to give us a decimal point in front of our first six. So let's also write a zero here. So our answer is negative 665 thousandths. OK, let's do one more. This time we just have two positive numbers. And again, when I'm writing this out to multiply it, I'm not needing to line up the decimal points. That doesn't matter with these. Okay, so if we take the 1 times each of these, we have 1 times 6 is 6, 5 times 1 is 5, and 8 times 1 is 8. Then for our next row, we have 6 times 3 is 18. So we carry the 1. 5 times 3 is 15, plus, six, plus 1 is 16. So we have to carry a 1 again. 8 times 3 is 24, plus 1 is 25. So now we're adding our columns. 5 plus 8 is 13. Carry the 1. 
So that's 9 plus 6 is 15. Carry the 1 here. We get a 6 and a 2. There's our initial product. Now we want to count our decimal places. Here we have 3. Here we have 1. We're adding that together. 3 plus 1 is 4, so that means we're going to put 4 decimal places in this. So we're starting here and counting back 1, 2, 3, 4. That's going to give us 2 and 6,536 ten thousandths. We can also estimate when we're multiplying decimals just to know that we're getting a reasonable answer. For example, if we were going to multiply 32 and 3 tenths times 1 and 9 tenths. Okay, so to get our exact answer, we're just going to go ahead and multiply these. So we have 3 times 9 is 27. Carry the 2. 2 times 9 is 18. Plus 2 is 20. So we write down 0 and carry the 2. 3 times 9 is 27. Plus 2 is 29. And for our next row, we have 3 times 1 is 3. 2 times 1 is 2. And 3 times 1 is 3. So we're now we're adding, carrying the 1 there. Here's our initial product. And again, we're looking at how many decimal places. This had one decimal place. This one also had one decimal place. 1 plus 1 is 2. So that means we need two decimal places. So we're going to count back to here. So here's our exact answer. Now if we want to estimate this to see if our answer is reasonable, then we're going to round each of our factors to the nearest whole number. So 32 and 3 tenths would round to 32. 1 and 9 tenths would round to 2. And if we multiply 32 times 2, we get 64. So again, it's not going to be exactly what we got for our exact answer, but it should be in the same ballpark. That tells us that this was a reasonable answer. Let's do some examples. We'll multiply and then we'll check our answers by estimating to make sure that they're reasonable. So if we have 6.8 times 3.2, and we're taking 8 times 2 is 16, carry the 1, 6 times 2 is 12, plus 1 is 13, then 8 times 3 is 24, carry the 2, 6 times 3 is 18, plus 2 is 20. So here's our initial product. Now we have to figure out how many decimal places. This had 1. This had one, so we're going to have two decimal places in our answer. So we're going to count back from here, one, two, and that's where our decimal point goes. Now to check this by estimating, let's round each factor to the nearest whole number. That would give us, for the 6 and 8 tenths, that would round to 7. 3 and 2 tenths would round to 3. 7 times 3 is 21. So again, we would say our answer, our exact answer is reasonable because it's in the same ballpark as our estimate. All right, now we have negative 5 and 8 tenths times negative 7 tenths. Now again, since we have two negatives, that's going to give us a product that's positive. So we already know our product is positive. That means we don't even have to worry about those negative signs. So let's just do our multiplication. So now if we take 8 times 7, that gives us 56. So we'll write down the 6, carry the 5, then 5 times 7 is 35, plus 5 is 40. So here's our initial product. Now for counting decimal places, we had 1 here, we had 1 here, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So again, we have two decimal places in our product. We're starting from here and counting back 2. That puts the decimal place right there. Now if we want to check this by estimating, Again, we're going to round to the nearest whole number, 5.8, we would round to 6, and 7 tenths, we would round to 1. 6 times 1 is 6. 
So again, it's not that close to our exact answer, but it's in the same ballpark. If we're multiplying decimals by powers of 10, there are a couple of shortcuts we can use. If we just look at the pattern of what happens when we do this, if we have the number 76 and 543 thousandths, if we multiply it by 10, if we actually went through and did that multiplication, we would get 765 and 43 hundredths. And notice all that happened was the decimal point here in our product was actually just moved one place to the right. And that, when we multiplied by 10, the 10 has one zero. If we go down here, if we multiply our same number by 100, notice what happens. It moves our decimal point two places to the right. And that corresponds to this having two zeros. Same thing down here, we could, we could go through a whole bunch of these and see the same pattern. Here, if we're multiplying by 100,000, which has five zeros, it actually moves our decimal point five places to the right. So there's one, two, three, and then for the next two places, we actually have to add zeros in our answer to get the next two decimal places. So we have two more, and that's where we get those two zeros there. The pattern here is that the decimal point gets moved to the right the same number of places as there are zeros in our power of 10. So if we had four zeros, then we would move our decimal point four places to the right. If we had 10 zeros, we would move our decimal point 10 places to the right. And what this lets us do is do the multiplication without even doing any calculations. All we have to do is count the zeros. So in this one, we have three zeros. That means we're going to move decimal, our decimal point three places to the right. That means we can just go ahead and write our answer down just by thinking about here's one place, two place, three places to the right. So now we have two, and our decimal point is right after the two, so we just have 2.7. Now what if we have a power of 10 that's smaller than one? So for example, if we have one tenth, one one hundredth, one one thousandth, and so on. Well this just has the opposite effect, and that is that instead of moving to the right, the decimal point moves to the left. And this time, we don't want to count the zeros in our power of 10. We just want to count the decimal places. So here we have one decimal place past the decimal point, and that moves our decimal point one place to the left. Here we have two decimal places, so it's moving it. Oops, <laughs> my slide is wrong. OK, so that's wrong. This is going to move this two places to the left. So this is going to be zero in front of the decimal point, and then these digits are all after the decimal point. This one's wrong also. This time we have five decimal places, so we're going to move our decimal point five places to the left. And now again, if we run, run out of digits, then we have to add zeros in here. So here's one, two, three, four, five places. Our decimal point's going to go right there, and we have to write zeros in there. So our answer is going to be zero, and then we have three zeros after our decimal point, and then we have the rest of our digits. So the pattern here is that the decimal point gets moved to the left the same number of places as there are decimal places in our power of 10. Let's do one more example. In this one, we have three decimal places. That means we're moving our decimal point three places to the left. So if we have our 27 hundredths, we're going to move it. There's one place, two places, three places. Our decimal point would go right there. And so we're going to have to write zeros in here again. So let's write a zero in front of the decimal point, And then we have two zeros that we added after the decimal point. Then we had the zero that was already there. And then we have our two and our seven digits. And it's always a good idea to go back and check these and make sure that we ended up with our decimal point in the right place. So in our original factor, our decimal point was right here. And let's check that it, we moved it actually three places. We go one, two, three. Yes, we did.
OK, let's do some examples where we're multiplying by powers of 10. OK, in this one we have a 10, which has 1, 0. That means we're going to move one place to the right. So we're going to move from there to there. That gives us 13 and 3 tenths for an answer. This one has two zeros. That means we're moving two places to the right. So going from here to there. This is still going to be a negative number. And notice when we do this, if we started out with a zero in front of the decimal point, we don't have to write that anymore. Now for this one, our power of 10 is a decimal value, so we're counting decimal places instead of counting zeros. So that means it's going to move our decimal point two places to the left. So we're going from here to here, and then going to the left one more. There's where our decimal point is going to be, and we'll have to put a zero in front of that. So we have zero, then our decimal point, then 0, a 9, a 0, and a 7. Okay, one last example. Now in this one, notice that we have two negatives. That means our product is going to be a positive. Now we just have to figure out how many decimal places we're moving. And notice here we have three decimal places. And that means that we're moving three places to the left. So we're taking this number and we're moving three places to the left. So there's where our decimal point goes. And again, we're going to have to write in zeros in those two places. Now we have a positive answer, so we don't have to worry about the negative sign. So we have a zero in front of the decimal point, then we have two zeros to the right, and then we write down the rest of our digits. Now let's evaluate some expressions when we have replacement values. So if we have xy, remember that's the same as x times y. So there are our parentheses. We're going to replace the x with a 2 and the y with negative 3 tenths. So if we multiply the, these, we have 2 times 3 tenths would give us 6. We know this is going to be negative because there was one negative in all of our factors. And then we had no decimal places here. We had one decimal place here. So we have zero places there. We have one place here. That means that our answer needs to have one decimal place. So we're going to move it from here over to there. So actually, this is going to be negative 6 tenths written like this. Now if we have x, z minus y, there are parentheses for the x and the z, and then minus the y. So we're, we're replacing the x with a 2, the z with 7.3, and the y with negative 3 tenths again. We have to remember order of operations, which says that multiplication comes before addition or subtraction. So this is our first operation to do is the 2 times the 7.3. So let's go ahead and work that out. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 7 is 14. And then again, here we have no decimal places. Here we have 1. So that means our answer, our product, has to have one decimal place. So if we start here, then we're going back to there. So for this part, we have 14 and 6 tenths. Here we have, we're subtracting a negative number. That's just going to turn into an addition. So again here, we're going to add our two decimals. And remember, when we're adding or subtracting, we do have to line up our decimal points. So if we're adding these, we have 6 plus 3 is 9. Our decimal point goes there. 4 plus 0 is 4. So we end up with 14 and 9 tenths. We can also solve problems by multiplying decimals. 
For the first one, we just want to write 57.6 million in standard form. You see things like this a lot in the news. They'll say something like 57.6 million. If we want to write this in standard form though, what we need to think about is this is actually the same as 57 and 6 tenths times 1 million. So remember a million has a 1 and 6 zeros. So now, since this is a power of 10, we can just count how many zeros we have, 6, and then we're going to move our decimal point 6 places to the right. So we started out with it here. So there's one place, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So our decimal point's going to go there. Then all these extra ones we have to put zeros in to hold those places. So here's what our number looks like, and let's write it with the commas in there, since we want it in standard form. So we have a comma here and a comma here. So there is our 57.6 million written in standard form. Now we have another problem. A one ounce serving of hot cocoa contains 375,000 grams of fat. How many grams of fat are in an 8 ounce mug of hot cocoa? So we're going from 1 ounce to 8 ounces. That means that we need to multiply our grams of fat by 8. So now let's write this this way. So we have 8 times 5 is 40. If we carry the 4, 8 times 7 is 56 plus 4 is 60. So now we're carrying a 6. 8 times 3 is 24, plus 6 is 30. So we have that, and now we're carrying a 3. And 8 times 0 is 0, plus 3 is 3. So here's our initial product, and again we're going to count decimal places. This had 3 places. This one had 0. So that means our product has three places. So we're starting here and moving over three places. So actually this just ends up, we could write this just as a whole number, that there are actually just three grams of fat in our eight ounce mug.